on! Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play 1001 Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and check out this awesome loading screen. Oh, and now we get uh, the barrage... The Barrage of Colors, a seizure-inducing technique to keep all the non-serious gamers away. And yes, this is a, an age-old technique to keep people away from the Amiga gaming uh, system. Um, all, again, only the most only the most dedicated fans will get to play Gravity Force. Guys, this is a game that was rated as the second best Amiga game of all time. So you may be very hopeful that this is going to be an awesome game. Uh, it's not a not awesome game. I did try it before this video because anyone who's watched my channel has known I have a lot of trouble getting Commodore and Amiga games working, but I'm working to fix that. I feel like my own incompetence when it comes to Commodore and Amiga games shouldn't be a hurdle to us playing these classic games, so I've decided to play Gravity Force. Um, this game is... Oh, it's funny. This game is actually known as Gravity Power, which is a rebranding of Gravity Force 2, which is the original title. So this is a sequel to Gravity Force 1. Um, we got some awesome parallax scrolling going on in the background with the stars, which gives us a, this faux 3D look. So let's hop right into it. We're going to go into Mission and check this game out. Enter Password. I don't have a password, but let's, let's try one just for kicks. How about Space Lord? Will that do anything? Now, this is the first level. This is what happens if you don't enter a password. So Space Lord is not a password. We've learned it. All right, here's my little ship here. And you can thrust up and down by pressing... Well, you can just thrust up, actually, by pressing the thrust key. I guess that's the airport that I am leaving from in this little cave game. I have one more button that lets me shoot. And that's pretty much it. Gravity does the rest, my friends. Oh, and I... You're supposed to pick up those little containers. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know what those containers are, but you're supposed to pick them up. And so this is it. This is Gravity Force. Again, this is the second best game of all time, according to uh, some Amiga magazine. It might have been Amiga Power or something. Uh, interesting point of trivia. Do you know what the best Amiga game of all time is? Sensible World of Soccer. Yes, good old Sensible World of Soccer is the number one best game all time on the Amiga. Oh god, I accelerated towards the ground. Not what I wanted to do. You know, I gotta say, just before we talk too much about this game, Sensible World of Soccer, really, that's the best Amiga game of all time? Really? Really? I don't know, like, oh man, I'm not even paying attention to where I'm going here. Um, Sensible World of Soccer, it was a good game. Sorry, I'm just uh, adjusting a window in the background, so I'm kind of flying aimlessly, just trying not to die. But okay, I'm back in the game. But Sensible World of Soccer, it was an okay enough game, but the best Amiga game of all time? I gotta say, that's a little surprising. Anyway, let's let's pick up the pace here. Uh, one thing that's hard about this game is that you have you're constantly fighting gravity. So this game kind of reminded me of Shooter, Pixel Junks. Oh, oh are you kidding me? I just crashed. I was going like two miles an hour. Okay. Let's accelerate. We don't have time to play it safe. Woo, now we're flying. Oh, God. Um, for those of you who have been keeping up, I recently played uh, Pixel Junk's Shooter on my channel, and that is a terrific game. The controls in that game are much more like asteroids, where if you don't press anything, you just kind of float there. This, you're kind of constantly float fighting against gravity, and an annoying thing is pretty much anything you touch will kill you. Uh, I got the two little buckets. I suspect I'm supposed to kind of come back here. Is that it? Yes, I beat the level. That actually took a bit of deduction. So when I said I tried this game before this video, I tried it a little bit to figure out how to beat a level and so on. It was not incredible. It was not obvious to me that I was supposed to pick those things up initially. Took a bit of trial and error. I guess the best Amiga game of all time, it's not always obvious how to play it or beat it. Um, whoa, God. And it is definitely hard to control. Alright, so Gravity Force 2, Gravity Power, whatever game you want to consider this. This game was a Thrust clone. Thrust was some game like this where you had to constantly battle against gravity and use your thrust to kind of uh, go 
up and down over mountains and so on. It's interesting that they, oh god, it is hard to control when you're aimed down and you need to slow down. You have to turn all the way around to face up. I much prefer shooters control scheme, which means ast I prefer asteroids. Oh god, uh. It's like it's so awkward when you have to shoot down because you gotta look up to, to keep going up. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, it's it's interesting how when this game first came out, they didn't call it... Uh, are you kidding me? What kind of sensitive-ass spaceship do I... And I'm dead. <laughs> Space Lord. Oh, it fits. <laughs> Fun little aspect to this uh, this old Amiga game. Every time you have to go back to the main menu for some reason, it crashes the whole game. Back to the loading montage. The seizure-inducing montage. All right, here we are. Oh, and it, it lost my high score. That's okay. Let's try this mission one more time here and see how we do. Uh, Gaming J rules with a Z because I'm that cool. Imagine that was a password. Start us on like the 50th level or something. That'd be freaky, actually. I would not want that to be a password. Oh, look at those sweet skills. Just iced whatever the hell that thing was. I like how in old games you were never quite sure what the, the bad guys were. They were just things that weren't you. And ergo, you had to destroy them. Oh god, don't shoot me! Forget it. I will let you live, just don't kill me. Whoa. But yeah, this game was considered a thrust clone. I guess subsequently they called it a... <laughs> Do I just pass the level now? Cause, oh yeah, because I got to do boxes. So when you get the new boxes, you can go back to the airport from which you spawned, or you can just peace out and die. Either way. There we go. So this game was eventually called a cave flyer, which is more of a genre of game. Thrust clone. I mean, you're really just saying, oh god, oh god, oh my, whoa, that took skill. But calling this game a Thrust clone is really just saying it is just like Thrust, only kind of different. Oh, stay away! Oh my god! It's kind of the same way how originally all first-person shooters were called Doom clones. They weren't called first-person shooters, we use very carefully. They were Doom clones. Oh god, it's so hard to control this. Well, at least now we're on level 3. I think calling games... X clone, like Doom clone, Thrust clone, or whatever. I don't think in modern gaming we really do that all that much. Like if a good, unique game came out, people would draw the comparison with, um, with subsequent games that used its mechanics. But I don't know if they'd call it a clone. They would probably be very quick to invent a name for that new genre. Like there aren't many games called Diablo clones. There are like action RPGs, which is basically what Diablo was. Oh, freak! But there aren't many Diablo clones. You guys know what I'm saying. One of the things that was really innovative about this game, by the way, was the split-screen multiplayer, which I don't have a second player to, to play that with. Oh, God! I hate how when those things die, they explode all over you. That sounds... That sounds inappropriate, but anyway... I don't have a second player to play the dogfight modes with, but I will show them to you because they're kind of interesting. I could totally see how, like, you're probably watching this being like, I don't know, this game isn't all that special. Kind of looks like it has sloppy controls. It's very easy to die. You know, what's the big fuss? Why was this the second best Amiga game of all time? And I will tell you, are you kidding me? Oh, I have, like, no, li no extra lives. This is it, guys. I will tell you that if this was the only thing I had going for it, I could, I would argue that this is not the second best Amiga game of all time. No way. But it has some pretty interesting deathmatch. And all things considered, I 100% could see the multiplayer being a huge draw of this. So although it is me and my lonesomes playing here, oh god, it's getting like really sophisticated now. Like they really want to test your skills to get this little cube. Anyway, it's me and my lonesomes playing for you guys, but we will we will peek at the multiplayer. And actually, I will say that I 
did look at the the multiplayer version of this and it reminded me of this awesome dos game called space war so i was thinking of maybe playing like 10 minutes of that or something at the end of this video and just you know adding it on as a little old bonus feature because why the heck not i don't think space war is in the thousand one games you must play before you die book oh stay away stay away don't shoot me okay we're just gonna try and sneak by all these dudes because when I try to kill things, that's when I usually die. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, come on! You freaking serious? The whole game crashing on the title screen, let me talk about that for a minute. I don't know if that's because the version of this game I got is broken in some way. Um, I can't say for sure whether this Amiga emulator is set up correctly. And you may think, well, you know, maybe it crashing. I should try to fix that um, before I keep going with the game. But let me just say that, again, I've said this multiple times. The whole premise of my series is that imagine you bought the book 1001 Games to play before you die. And you thought, man, I guess I'm actually going to try these games. How would an average person go about Oh God, that thing chases you. I should have killed it. How would an average person go about completing this quest? For really old games like this, like for the Amiga, you know, where the hardware is probably very difficult to get a hold of, I would argue that most people would just, oh God, like you couldn't even dodge. If that thing was going to, if that bullet was going to get me, it would have got me. There's no way to dodge it. I just got lucky there. But most people, I think, would just find an emulator and and download it. That's for these very, very old games. I think that's almost the best way to try and play them. Because realistically, who's going to buy an old Amiga computer and then find some discs that contain this game and so on? So yeah, the fact that this game crashes, I don't know. It, it's sort of like this is the only way to really experience this game these days, I think. I could be wrong. Maybe there's an updated version on Steam. But I think the fact that we have this really old game that, that's crashing and so on... It's kind of part of the experience of playing this 1001 games. It's all part and parcel. And hey, you know what? Anyone who really owned an Amiga or played games on DOS or anything like that, you know, if your games didn't crash periodically, I mean, you wouldn't have been having an authentic experience. Old games crash. They're buggy. Weird things happen. It's just how they are. And so uh, I'm, I'm keeping this part in the video. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. But I think experiencing these old games, you have to experience trying to set them up, too. It's part of the 1001 games experience, damn it. Oh, God. I'm getting a little better at this. I don't know if you guys can tell or not. Oh, God. But I'm still not very good at that. Oh, God. This is really tricky. You can only get like two or three shots in. Oh man. All right. Interesting thing about this game is it was released as both shareware and freeware, which is interesting. So if you don't know what shareware is, long before the internet was really a thing, people would um, give away free demos of their game where you could play um, quite a few, maybe like a third of the game. And if you liked it, you were supposed to pay money to get the other two thirds of it. So that's what shareware was. The idea is people would share these demo versions of the game with their friends. And when enough people liked your game, people would start buying it. So it was a really great pre-internet model for uh, getting your game out there. Now, freeware, as it sounds, is basically just, I'm going to give you my game for free. No strings attached. Oh, you can kill that thing. I didn't know if you could or not. I was going to try and sneak through it. Thank God I don't have to, though. Um, so it's kind of interesting to release a game both as shareware, where you're expecting people to pay for it, and freeware. So I don't fully understand what was going on there. And as I said, this game was originally called Gravity Force 2. It was a sequel to the first Gravity Force, which was like this, apparently. But then, uh, I guess Amiga Power, unrelated to Nintendo Power, I think, it was a magazine devoted to Amiga. Um, this is all off Wikipedia, by the way. <laughs> I, I wasn't there. I don't fully know if this is 100% accurate or legit. But basically, I guess the what I read 
is that Amiga Power commissioned the developers. Oh no, oh my God. But the skin of our teeth were surviving. Holy crap, get out of there. Wow. I have developed some high level gravity power skills, guys. And I landed right beside the crate as I say that. Oh, oh God. Are you serious? Pick it up. What's happening? What? Do I have to drop them off one at a time? What is going on? Okay. Oh, God. Don't die. Don't you die. Anyway, Amiga Power liked this game so much. They said, you know what? Do it again. Improve it a little bit. And we're going to call it Gravity Power and give it away with our magazine. So this game came free with Amiga Magazine. But you could also pay for it if you wanted. I don't know how it all worked. Seems like an odd business model to me. I mean, how many things can you think of where they made something and they were like, okay, you can pay for it if you want, or here's the free version of it. Can't imagine that a lot of people would pay for those types of things, but who the heck knows? Okay, here we go. So this is probably the first Amiga game I've really gotten to work successfully. Although I guess back way back in the day, I did a Back to the Future Amiga game. I didn't even realize how hard Amiga was going to be to set up uh, when I made that video. I just sort of picked the Back to the Future Amiga game because it looked cool. If only I had known then what I know now. Amiga has been hard to set up. Commodore 64, really hard. ZX Spectrum, I've gotten a few of those working. You know, something else I thought of is that the ZX Spectrum and the Amiga really were kind of UK systems. They were British, really. I mean, I'm from Canada. I I know the name Amiga, but I definitely did not own an Amiga or a ZX Spectrum, and I don't know anyone who did. And it kind of made me think how, you know, modern systems, there's Japanese and there's American. But that's kind of it. There's definitely does not seem to be a big presence for British-made consoles. And so the, the idea of a British console is actually kind of interesting. Um, I mean, what would a modern British console even look like? It's hard to say. There definitely is sort of a feel to the ZX Spectrum and the Amiga that is unique. Oh god, oh man, by the skin of our teeth, again, we are just the luckiest pilots in the world. But there's something about this game that feels a little British. And most ZX Spectrum games kind of are the same. And I can't put my finger on it. It's just sort of a bit of the graphics and the sound, I don't know. In the same way that I feel like I can totally feel a little bit when a game is Japanese. There's just sort of a Japanese feel to it. I mean, Mario s seems Japanese in a weird way. It's, uh, what would you define as Japanese games? They include cute characters, um, interesting sound effects, very sort of creative gameplay elements, like Mario eating the mushrooms to get big. That is sort of, I don't think something that a lot of other, oh god, oh well, a lot of other countries like America or Britain would have necessarily thought of. Like this is a game about spaceships and it's got like a an airport that I'm taking off from and like robot-y looking things. If this were Japanese there'd be way more sort of quirky zaniness going on. How many of these things are there? Jesus. Oh god. Just enough to kill me apparently. Okay what is this F? Is that fuel? Do these things just spawn eternally? Let's not mess with them anymore. Let's just let them go. We just want to pick up our nondescript gray boxes and move on. What are, what are in these crates? What am I really doing here? Maybe I'm a smuggler like Han Solo. And this is the Empire. Wait, I don't know where he went. He's going to show up and kill me. I got him. Okay, F is, I'm guessing, fuel. I've yet to run out of fuel. I keep dying before that happens. But I'm guessing fuel is pretty important at some point. Good, fuel 99. Glad we got that sorted out. Got two boxes. All right, now we just let gravity do its thing. Ooh, 
Whoa. <laughs> Guess another question with this game is like, there's definitely gravity. So am I going up or down into this cave here? Because it's not like I'm just floating around in space. Ooh, password, Agnes. Oh, well, that's clearly a British game then, right? If Agnes is one of your passwords, my God, are you playing a British game? Just going to throw out and say it, or, or throw that out there. I don't know if any of you played too many old DOS games back in the day, but this certainly is reminiscent of many of the DOS games uh, that I played. And as I said, I'm going to play Space War really briefly at the end, just to kind of have a little bonus feature on this video. But it's because the multiplayer mode really reminded me of Space War. But this, I mean, it's very simple graphics that you could make in, like, Photoshop, honestly. Um, very simple gameplay mechanic. Um, not necessarily, I'm not saying it's bad or anything, but it's sort of a simple idea. And I, I remember back in the day, okay, how I used to get games. There's something up there. Go away! Oh my god! <laughs> He was just like, I'm just going to run into you. And ain't nothing you can do that's going to stop it. But I remember back in the day when I played, when I had a computer and I had DOS. And when I wanted a new game, again, there was no internet. I had a catalog. I had these catalogs that I would get at like uh, the CNE, which is the Canadian National Exhibition. Uh, and I remember there would be the, these booths that just had boxes and boxes of computer game discs for DOS. And they would just have random titles on them, like Morath's Revenge, or like Extreme Volleyball, or like Robot Wars. And you literally had no idea what the game was about. Like, you couldn't look it up and be like, you know, oh, is Morath's Revenge any good? Nope, you just had no idea. You simply had to look at the title and be like, well, I guess I'll pay five bucks for this one, see what happens. Um, and there were whole catalogs where you could do this. I remember sitting in my bedroom with this, oh God, get out of there, with with these catalogs and just leafing through and circling the names of games that sounded fun. And the way it would work is you would, you would pay like 20 bucks and you would get like five games. Okay, I think we're gonna have to sneak, sneak by this guy. Cause he ain't dying. Um, and so I have a lot of vivid memories of, like, ordering these, like, just randomly picked games. I don't know. And it was always kind of, you know what it was kind of like? Uh, it reminds me of, like, uh, Ipsy or Loot Bag. Ipsy's, like, the female one where you get makeup. Loot, loot Crate. Loot Crate is the one where you get sort of, like, gaming. Oh, are you kidding me, paraphernalia? Okay, we got one more level in us. But, yeah, you just get this random package in the mail. And you would run to your bedroom and you would crack it open. You'd have like 40 discs in there. You spent like 20 bucks or 30 bucks to get them all. And you just sit there and try them one at a time. And the funny thing is most of the games sucked. You know, you I guess you wouldn't have 40 discs. But let's say you had, you know, 15 games. You just sit there trying them one at a time. You'd be like, nope, this one sucks. How about this one? Nope, this one sucks. Okay, how about this one? And, oh, what? Ridiculous. Okay, let's crash the game. Um, you, yeah, you would just s sift through these games one at a time, trying to find one that was good. And when you did, it was like a real win. You know, if you could get, if one out of five games were good, that was like a success. Like you did your job correctly and you won. Okay, we're going to try, um, no, what is race? Okay, let's quickly try race and see, see what this is. Ah, oh, okay. So we just have to sail around through these different uh, different numbers here. I can do this. This is easy. Oh, and our score is getting smaller as we go. Oh, interesting. So I like this. I like the fact that there's multiple game modes here. If this was a game that I got in a big bundle of discs, I would consider that worth it there's there's some gameplay going on here it's got some bits and pieces I like it yeah I don't know if anyone out there remembers ordering DOS games from these paperback manuals that was that was a shit man kind of reminds me actually when you, when I was like really young 
I would sift through the toy section of the Sears catalog and I would circle all the toys that I wanted. Again, you know, before Amazon was a thing, before a lot of the internet was a thing, people still did a lot of the stuff that they do today, um, like shopping and so on. They just did it a little different. Boom, I'm the best racer in the world. Wow, that's it, eh? They're just like, and that's that. All right, we got one more game mode to try. And that is the two-player mode. That is just me showing you the two-player mode. So there isn't much to it, in fact, actually. I wonder, I hope this has actually not given anyone seizures. I wonder if anyone's turned off the video because of these ridiculous sections. I wonder why they're, they're there. I don't know. Is it just like a idiosyncrasy of the Amiga? Okay, we can do a two pilots race, which is basically what I just did, except with two people, which is pretty cool. Or a dogfight. So let's take a quick look at what a dogfight looks like. Because this is actually kind of cool. So I'm in the top screen, obviously. I have an inanimate partner in the bottom. And I'm going to sail around and kick his butt. So they still have enemies and stuff. I don't know if there's power-ups. Oh, God. Well, the enemies do the work for you. But yeah, I could totally see this being fun. So, in a way... <laughs> just strafe the guy. Peace. Oh, that sucks. If a guy gets you right there, if a guy catches you at your, like, spawn point, he can just keep shooting you till the end of time. There's nothing you can do. Interesting, interesting. Um, before I jump to Space War, let me just say that this is a very interesting game. I really wonder, though, if you were a fan of this game, if you were to try it today, I wonder if you would feel it holds up. Especially, like, the control scheme. I'm going to say it. I'm not a fan of it. I wish it had a control scheme more like Asteroids or Shooter, where you kind of float there and you can bump into the walls. It doesn't kill you. And you're not constantly battling gravity to just stay where you are on the screen. Because when I want to shoot up, it's easy. I'm already facing up. When I face down and shoot, you know, after a second or two, it's like you got to go up just to maintain your current position on the screen to get some thrust. So I don't know about this game. Um, I think we've learned that when you're exploring caves, it's definitely a risky job. Um, and that it might be a good idea to have a spaceship that has a bit of durability to it. Because this thing is like sensitive as a paper towel. Like, look at that. I mean, I guess it went full speed there. But okay, let's try and land this very, very gently, but like slightly angled. Oh, that worked. Okay, hold on. Is this going to kill me? Yeah, that, that's enough to kill me. That's enough of an angle. That's two degrees off. And I wasn't even going fast. Like... Can we hit it fast? Yeah. So it's very easy to die in this game. I don't know. You know, as I've been playing through this, this Thousand and One games, um, some games I have found hold up well. I wonder if this would be it. Some games actually I found to be a little less entertaining than I remember. I won't kill this guy for just two more seconds while I talk. But some games are a little less entertaining than I recall them to be. Although generally still good. I'm not always the best at uh, these games that I play, though. But, oh, okay. I ah, forget it. Let's just ice this guy and get to Space Wars. Woo, victory! Wait, now what happens? What? <laughs> you have to die after you kill him. Oh, that's nice. For once, the game doesn't crash. But now we're done with it. All right, very quickly, Gravity Force. The pros are, it is actually a very... Uh, Relatively easy to control game, has simple mechanics. The two player modes look really fun. The cons are the single player is kind of boring, uh, or not necessarily boring, but um, you know, th there could be more to it, I guess. Uh, and probably for its time, it was a revolution, not doubting that. But does it hold up today? I have some doubts. And two player mode may be a totally different story, by the way. But should you play this before you die, I would say if you can get a friend, give it a try. But do you need to play it solo? I would say, no, you can skip it. And with that in mind, let's jump to a two-player game. 